So as was mentioned previously, when we have a balanced chemical equation, we actually have a description of both the quantities and identities of the things that are reacting. So there is numerical information contained within a balanced chemical equation. So in chemical formulas or in um, chemical equations, we indicate the number of something by using what we call coefficients. In a formula, these are indicated as subscripts. You see them here. Now we never put a subscript as a one because the presence of the um, the symbol is you know indicative that there is at least one of the substance present. So we would never write something like this. Okay. So if I look at water here. What this formula is telling me is that in one molecule of water, there would be two atoms of hydrogen for every one atom of oxygen. Now, because this is a covalent compound, I understand that a water molecule is composed of three atoms that are connected to one another just like this. And in every one molecule, two of those atoms are going to be hydrogens and one of them will be oxygen. So I can start doing some sort of like interesting math at this point. It says how many atoms of hydrogen would there be in a thousand water molecules? So if I've got a thousand water molecules, what I know is that I get two hydrogen atoms for every one water molecule. And so I'm effectively here doing a unit conversion, right? So that means that I'm going to get 2000 hydrogen atoms. And we know to do a unit conversion, we multiply by the fraction that has the units we want to cancel in the correct place and the units that we want in our answer in the correct place. So being able to use unit, um, being able to use conversion factors to achieve unit conversions is a really, really important skill in chemistry. So what we've just observed is that the subscripts that are in a formula give the number of each atom type that is present in one formula unit of that substance. Now this works for both molecular substances and also ionic substances. So in one formula unit of sodium oxide, we know that we get two sodium ions for every one sodium oxide. And we also know that we get one oxide anion for every one formula unit of sodium oxide. And of course, we could also write things like this. We could write that we get two sodium ions for every one oxide anion. And we can write these um, fractions, these what we call mole ratios, either way up, right? So we can always kind of like, you know, we can write a whole bunch of these ratios expressing how one thing is related to another given a chemical formula. And what that means is that now we can calculate the amount of an element or an ion that is present given, you know, its amount in a compound. And so, yeah, if we have the amount of compound, we know how much of each element or ion is present as long as we have the formula. So using these subscripts that are present in a formula, we establish ratios. We're going to later on, we're going to call them mole ratios, but that's a little bit um, complex for now, of each of the atom or ion types that are present. So here's a molecular compound, and we can write a whole bunch of these ratios. We get two nitrogen atoms for every one unit or every one molecule of N2O4. We, can, we have one molecule of N2O4 for every two nitrogen atoms. You can see I can write each of these ratios um, either way up. For oxygen, we can write that we get four oxygen atoms for every one molecule of N2O4. Sometimes people will say every one unit, particularly when it's an ionic compound where there are no molecules. Or we can say that there is one molecule of NO2 for every four oxygen atoms. And of course, we could say that there are two nitrogen atoms for every four oxygen atoms, right? We can relate anything 
via one of these fractions. So fractions are just what in chemistry we call conversion factors. And they, these conversion factors um, here are going to allow you to convert from the number of molecules of compound to the numbers of a particular atom or the, we can flip our um, conversion factor and go the other way. So here's an example. It says we've got 15 molecules of my favorite molecule, caffeine, and has a fairly complex formula where we've got four atom types present. And then it says how many carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, and nitrogen atoms, uh, nitrogen and oxygen atoms are there. And it's pretty simple. We're just going to use the subscripts to create conversion factors, right? So I got 1.5 molecules of caffeine. And according to the formula, I get eight carbon atoms for every one molecule. So molecules of caffeine cancels out and leaves me with atoms of carbon. And then it's just the same all the way through. And I'm just building these conversion factors using the subscripts in the formula. So 1.5 molecules of caffeine. And according to my formula, I get 10 hydrogen atoms per one molecule. So therefore, I've got 15 hydrogen atoms in every one in, in my... Um, I've got 1.5 here, that's a little weird. It should be 15, shouldn't it? But that's okay. And so on and so forth, all right? So every time, I'm just canceling my units though to make sure that I'm left with what I want. The coefficient here is coming from my formula. Okay, so I think that's a pretty, pretty simple concept. Now, we kind of at the beginning started talking about balanced chemical equations. What's that all about, right? So using a balanced equation, you can determine how much product can be formed from a given amount of reactant. And what's going to help us with this is not the subscripts, but rather the coefficients that appear at the front here. And we're going to use these coefficients in a similar way that we use the subscripts in a chemical formula. So this is for the whole equation. And so when I look at this equation here, which is for the combustion of um, methane, methane is just the major component in natural gas, I see that one molecule of methane or one unit of methane reacts with two units of oxygen to produce one unit of CO2 and two units of water. So, if I react two molecules of methane with oxygen, how many molecules of H2O might I expect to make? And so the key here is recognizing that I get two molecules of H2O according to my balanced equation for every one molecule of CH4. And I'm going to use this ratio as my conversion factor. So you can see that my number of molecules of H2O is equal to my two moles of methane that I started with multiplied by this ratio. I get two molecules of water for every one molecule of methane. And there they go, they cancel this out, and sure enough, it leaves me with molecules of water. So I'm going to be able to make four molecules of water if I react all of my molecules of methane. So Let's have a look at another one. In this case, I've got a balanced equation here, and it, it says I've got three atoms of ion, iron that I'm going to react with O2 to make Fe2O3. So the question is, is how many formula units of Fe2O3 can I make? So I got three atoms of iron. So I'm going to need to multiply this by the conversion factor that has atoms of iron on the bottom and I want to turn it into formula units of Fe2O3. Now according to my balanced equation I get two formula units of Fe2O3 for every four atom of um, iron. So what does that mean? I could make a maximum of one and a half formula units of Fe2O3. So it's a pretty simple idea. I can see that my units cancel. Okay, what about this one? I want to make 5.8 formula units of Fe2O3. How many molecules of oxygen do I need? It's going to be the same um, process. 
So this is kind of like, you know, when you're cooking for your family, you're like, okay, I got four members of, of my family, you know, and um, I need to go shopping. How many pounds of ground beef am I going to need to buy to make, you know, that yummy meatloaf that everybody loves, right? And you kind of do that calculation, don't you? You know what you want, and then you work back to like the ingredients that you need, which is what we're doing here. So I'm going to do 5.8 formula units of Fe2O3. And so I know I need to multiply that by the conversion factor that has formula units of Fe2O3 on the bottom. And I want to turn it into molecules of O2. So it needs molecules of O2 on the top. And then according to my balance equation, I got three molecules of O2 for every two formula units of Fe2O3. So I've got to multiply 5.8 by 3 on 2. And then that's going to give me 8.7 molecules O2. So that's pretty straightforward and I always check that my units cancel. Always, always, always. Otherwise there's no point in writing all the units in, right? Always write the units in, always cancel them out. That's how you get maximum partial credit on your quizzes and tests. Okay, so that concludes this um, brief video about how we use the information, the quantitative information that is contained within either a chemical formula or a whole balanced chemical equation to begin to do some math to understand the amounts of things that are being reacted and the amounts of things that are being produced.